Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at these two DVP, uh, which is Digital Video Broadcasting MPEG-2 decoders. Uh, I merely took these home with me because of the nice 19 inch rack enclosures that I could reuse for some other projects. So uh, now that I have them, let's check out what's inside. The small unit here is a Digiality SMTV, SMATV 212S. This is a single channel DVB MPEG-2 decoder. You have your card readers, you have your, see here the channel it's programmed for, and this has a digital menu. At the back of the unit, we have a 230 volt AC in, two fans, video out, audio out, input and loop. Because this is meant to be rack mounted for one of these for each channel, and you can just uh, daisy chain the uh, whole cable network going back and forth between all the units. Now the uh, other one, it's a, a Tanberg TT1200, again a MPEG-2 DVB decoder. Also have a uh, small display along with four buttons. The back side of this unit, again 230 volt AC, some alarm output, two video outputs, left and right audio out, Serial interface and a decoding card, and we have the antenna input. So the lid comes off the first unit. Seems to be a uh, single ST Omega STI 5517AWA processor. Does not seem to have any other ICs except maybe some RAM and some other logic circuits. 27 megahertz crystal sitting right here. We have the two card readers. We have the satellite TV input and also loop output. So this is the whole uh, filtering for the carrier frequency of the signal. And this will do all the MPEG-2 and DVB decoding and demuxing. Now we can see it has a single uh, power supply sitting here. Quite nice that it's separated from the main board, so I can actually reuse this, except that the electrolytic capacitors here are at least four of them, five of them are popped out, so that we'll have to uh, get those changed in order to reuse that power supply. Once this uh, DVB standard was agreed upon, that was in 1995, when the first DVB-S standard came out from the DVB organization, and later on the DVB-T in 1997 came. And that was actually a problem, a giant environmental problem, when it came to that you have to discard off all the old analog TVs when switching over to digital TV signals. So in America alone, they were looking into 100 million analog TV sets that would have to get scrapped. It was a, actually a pretty huge uh, problem um, that would have to be taken care of with the introduction of this broadcasting technology. So let's take a look at the Tanberg. The Tanberg unit is, uh, for some reason, much larger. Whoa, that's nice! Okay, completely uh, not expected when we look at this unit. And then we have this one, which seems to have a actual mainframe build-up that has a backbone at which you can put in different option cards. So it probably has a main board with some large CPUs on and then a card reader and a module for the antenna input. Wow, that's a really neat design. And again with a separate power supply. And this is actually look to be in great shape. Maybe we can see what it puts out. 5 volts, 16 volts, and minus 16 volts. So that's a nice uh, dual power supply that could be used for something like up amps that has to uh, use a negative and positive supply rail. Or again, gate drive for something like digital or high side drivers for a MOSFET or ITPT bridge. Now if we look closer at these uh, chips, we have some TI TMS 320 series CPU with a 24 megahertz crystal next to it. This is a 
ST chip, or ST3500, so probably some kind of FPGA. But over here we can see we get into some Divicom, VLSI, MPEG-2 demoxer, transport demoxing. So it's quite clear that these are made specifically for the MPEG-2 layer or the DBB standards. And we can see this is running at 27 megahertz, just like the other unit was. And over here we have some 3.5 and 3.68 megahertz units. So that's probably some other, yeah, decoding logic to uh, that uh, card reader. And over at the signal input, we have a much bigger amplifier here. We actually have a power amplifier MOSFET, it seems. Comes along with two and sits out on a mother daughter board here. Quite interesting. So I'll get this uh, taken further apart so we can see what's underneath. Everything came loose, pretty easy. Let's see the main output board here. Has some RAM, the controllers are set. Must have some kind of audio interface as well. Could be that Philips chip. Pretty straightforward designs. A lot of uh, straight lines. Not so much witchery going on on these. You can see there's a few, uh, quite a lot actually, um, gold spotted test points. And not so much on the other side. Actually it has a single trimmer part sitting right there at the output. That's quite interesting. Now the uh, card reader, could expect these to have some kind of uh, security built-in, but seems to be based around a Motorola 68000 CPU there. Has a little Silinx uh, FPGA as well, along with the Divicom chips. Ah, interesting, that actually has a quite, a fi quite a few fixes that was done after production of all these boards. You can see we have two green wires running here. Not uncommon for a production board from this era that uh, you would have some errors, but production time and such at this uh, time in uh, electronics, uh, it was uh, simply too costly to yeah, scrap the boards and get new new one made. Now we get over to the input board where we have the receiving filter. And this is actually a 5 volt regulator, so that seems to be quite hard. Has a Philips chip sitting here, along with these VLSI satellite DVB chips and a satellite FEC COM Atlas. So that's quite some specific ICs we have sitting here, along with some analog digital 9066. Interesting to see what that is. Runs at 61 megahertz. Take this board off. Quite packed, but also quite a straightforward design. Again, there's a lot of space for putting the decoupling capacitors in the right places and, and such. Re really uh, nice and straightforward designs. Now underneath, a little more hackery. At least we have uh, one, two, three, four wires going across here. Seems to be uh, addressable with a small hex turnable switch. Whoops. And not much on the back side of that. Now the uh, backbone card here. Seems to have some logic sitting along with the connectors for the LCD and the input touch buttons. And we can see the lines for the bus all run over to the two uh, main controller boards here. And we have some kind of dummy board sitting here, just has a lot of bridges over it. It's dated 97, just says component side. So that seems to just be, oh, that's, that's actually glued in. <clears throat> oh, was that really glue? Oh, that's just some really badass tape. But let's just assume we have all this sitting back down here because I did 
get more than one unit of each of the black small one and the large gray tan bird here. So if we put these boards back in place where they came from, we take a look at this. And I took another unit of this apart, completely identical on the outside. But as you can see, that just had one single board on the inside. Quite a substantial difference in design. Where this has multiplied boards with each that job, here we have what seems to be a demuxing chip, DMX. We have some uh, the receiver along with a Broadcom IC here. That's probably to do with the whole satellite receiving. Then we have a Silinx FPGA and uh, some other ST part, I'm not quite sure. Along with some RAM, other ICs, controllers and such. I hope you enjoyed this teardown as much as I enjoyed making it. And I also gained two nice 19 inch rack enclosures. Actually I gained six because I have two of these large gray ones and I have four of these small black ones. And uh, it seems that I can reuse the two nice displays, maybe along with the push buttons. And at least for the big ones here, the power supply is still in a really good shape. But perhaps not the right kind of output voltages for what I would use them for. But until next time, see ya.